Coming next to the stage is Amir Michael. Amir Michael was just not only one of the co-founders of Open Compute, he's now CEO of Kulain, a really cool analytics company that helps you to better understand the total cost of ownership and how uh, putting together your total cost of infrastructure. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Amir Michael. Hi, thank you for coming today. My name is Amir. I'm the founder and CEO of Coolan, co-founder of the Open Compute Project. It's been a long two, or for some of you, three days at the summit. I'm sure you've seen plenty of presentations with pictures of servers in them. I promise you I won't show you a single server in any of my slides. We're going to do something new. So what am I talking about today? I'm talking about a TCO model, a model for understanding how you should deploy your infrastructure. At Coolan, we work with a lot of customers, and they send us data about their infrastructure. We analyze that infrastructure, and we tell them how to better, uh, how to better run their systems. Many of them are going through the process of offboarding, not often talked about in the industry, but there's a trend of people moving off of the cloud, and they're trying to understand at what point does it make sense for them to move off of the cloud and to run their own infrastructure. There's lots of factors that go into this. Why would I move off of, off of the cloud? Uh, a lot of them have to do with cost. A lot of them have to do with control. There's lots of questions you have to answer around supply chain, around when infrastructure can be delivered to you. Should I build a custom data center? Should I go into a co-location? All of these things are good questions. Oftentimes, people tend to focus on the cost. So at Coolan, to help some of our pilots, we build out a TCO model a total cost of ownership model that lets you evaluate and understand the cost points for different types of deployments. So what would I use this for? You can use this to understand if I should try and build my own servers or if I should go to an OEM and buy them. What hardware components should I use? How do I evaluate if I should upgrade systems or if I should deploy new systems? Should I actually move off on-premise and should I abandon the cloud? Lots of factors go into making these decisions. Lots of ingredients need to go into here. So we build this model where you can put in all of this information. And we broke down that information into a couple different categories. Global information. What is my cost of capital? Money that goes into deploying servers has a cost associated with it. What's my PUE going to be in my data center? What's the maximum PUE going to be? How much power is my network consuming? All of these are one part of the model that you'll put in there. What does my cluster look like? How many servers do I need? How many storage servers are, are part of that cluster? What's my replication factor going to be? How about bandwidth? And then lots and lots of additional details that go into this model. So what we did is we created a good template for this. We're going to open it up, give it to people to use, so they can now go ahead and evaluate their infrastructure as well. Let's look at some more of the details. I need a server. What does that server look like? Do I go OCP? Do I go... OEM, how much does it cost? Should I build it? How about in the cloud? What does it cost me to actually use an instance from AWS, from Google Compute, from Azure? What type of performance do I get from there? On the storage side, how many terabytes of data do I need to store? Do I buy a server? Is it direct attached? Do I go with an EMC appliance? How about on the cloud? What does it cost to actually have a terabyte of storage? Network gear. What type do I use? What does the topology look like? How about on the cloud? They charge for egress. How much bandwidth am I going to be using? Do I build a custom data center? What's the OPEX associated with that custom data center? Right? How much am I going to pay for power? How about for operations and maintenance? What about the CapEx? Does land cost a lot? Is the building expensive? And if I'm leasing a co-location, what does that deal look like? How do I structure that? And how about the labor? You need people to do all these things. How, much do I, how many technicians do I need? How many sysadmins do I need? Lots of things go into this TCO model. And you get something on the output. You put it into this factory. This particular one happens to produce donuts. We produce bits. And so we looked at a couple different ways of thinking about the output. In the cloud, how much does that cost me to run? Typically, clouds are short-term deployments. We looked at that over a three-year period of time. In a co-location, you can also do that for a shorter period of time. 
how much does it, uh, how much is the amortization cost over three years if I'm deploying in a co-location? And what about a custom data center? You're not going to build a data center and abandon it after three years. Typically, you hold around, you hold onto a data center for 18 years. So lots and lots of things go into this machine, into this TCO model. You can't account for everything that's going to go into this model. There are some limitations as well. And when we release this model, it's up to you to take it, to adjust it for your own use case, and take into account some of the limitations that are there today that we talk about. Taxes, for example, control over the infrastructure, geography, where you're going to actually build your data center, capacity planning, software tools. How much does it cost me to repair servers? What about price trends? Is there going to be a flood in Thailand where prices of drives are going to go up? All of these things are harder to model, and if you want to try and understand these things, you have to make some modifications to it. So I talked about this model. What does it actually look like? Well, it's a very big spreadsheet that we're going to take, open it up, and allow everyone to take and use for it on their own. Put in your information to the spreadsheet, adjust it, and extract from it the value you need. So let's get a little bit geeky. We ran some models through the spreadsheet, some analysis, and actually tried to uncover a couple myths or perhaps debunk some truths that people believe exist today with infrastructure. One of them is this. Is the cost of power actually a significant percentage of my cost for running infrastructure? We simulated a cluster with 4,000 servers in it, 200 watts in it, 200 watts per server, and then added 625 storage servers to it for a total capacity of one and a half megawatts, and then graphed. What is the actual cost of power in a co-location on the blue line and the data center on the red line? And you can see here, co-locations, the cost of power is typically more because co-locations have typically higher PUEs. Uh, on the data center side, the cost of power is lower. What we did here on the graph on the x-axis is change the price of power. Go from the lowest end of one cent per kilowatt hour, which you'll be hard pressed to find that today, and then increase the cost of power all the way up to 50 cents a kilowatt hour, which is probably the most expensive power you'll find on the planet today. And what we found is that the cost of power is actually insignificant. If you're running a co-location and you're paying 50 cents a kilowatt hour, you're only still going to be a total of 5% of your overall cost of infrastructure going into the cost of power. On your customized data center side, you are only max out at 3%. So the cost of power is actually fairly insignificant when it comes to running infrastructure. What about this next big question? Do I deploy in the, in the cloud? Do I go to a co-location? Do I build a customized data center? How big do I need to be for one of these to make sense? Typically, people think if you're small, you'll deploy in the cloud. If you're large, you're going to want to build your own data center. Is this actually true? So we graphed this, and we varied the number of storage inputs. The graph here is separated into six subgraphs, where we, each one has a different number of storage servers, all the way from 0 to 2,500 storage servers. And then we went and increased the number of compute servers. And then we graphed the cost of the infrastructure in the data center, which is the red line, customized data center, the green line, which is a co-location, and the blue line, which is a cloud. And we found a couple interesting things. If you're doing 100% compute, meaning you have almost no storage in your infrastructure, the cloud almost always wins. And you're going to be far cheaper if you deploy it inside of the cloud. If you run storage and you have absolutely no compute, things get really interesting. And with 500 storage servers, it already makes sense to go and lease a co-location and deploy your servers over there. With just 1,000 storage servers, you might as well go and build your own data center. Regardless of the application type, the costs of a customized data center grow a lot slower than you would in any of the other deployments, which makes sense. Large companies like Rackspace, Microsoft, Facebook all build their own data centers because it allows them to avoid incremental cost growth. And for smaller applications, just like our, uh, the hypothesis was that I stated, it makes sense to deploy inside of the cloud. There's a lot less upfront costs. 
But why is it this trend? Why does storage seem to have such a big impact on the cost of deploying your infrastructure? So we went and we picked that apart a little bit. Hoarding bits is fairly easy. Taking bits, splattering them on a platter on disks is relatively easy. Anyone can do that. It's the organization of these bits that is challenging, that's tricky. And being able to do that very effectively is something that a lot of people struggle with today, which is why many people, when they think about storage, will opt to use appliances, not because of the underlying hardware, but because of the underlying software that's allowing them to organize their bits of data. So we dug a little bit more, and we graphed that. The red line is the cost of storing one terabyte of data on a spinning disk, so the cost of the cheapest hard drive back since 2006. And you can see the price has declined over time. The blue line is the cost of storing one terabyte of data in the cloud. And you can see that's declined as well. We normalized these values back in 2006 so that they'll be equal, and then we graph the percentage. How much do they change over time? And you can see the prices for raw disks have dropped more aggressively than the prices for cloud storage. So the cloud providers are actually aren't keeping up with the cost of raw disk, but they are charging a premium. And that premium is because their service organizes your bits well. If you put data into S3, you automatically get replication, and you get automatic backups. You don't have to worry about that. Just like if you were to buy an appliance from EMC or NetApp or another storage vendor, you can always count on them to apply that software to you. Now, if you're to apply that, uh, to include that software with their appliance. Now, if you're good and you can write your own distributed file system and take uh, and manage replications on your own, you can go ahead and get to the raw cost per bit and just buy drives, get to the lowest cost. So what we did notice, though, is that lately the cost of cloud storage has been dropping dramatically. And if this trend increase or continues to go, even deploying inside of the cloud can become cheaper than buying your own raw storage at some point in time. So I talked about the model. I showed you some interesting use cases that we pulled apart. We did some analysis. And we're going to open this model and give it to you and allow you to use it. There's lots of use cases we have, and our customers are always finding interesting ways for plugging data into this model and figuring out things they didn't know before. Caveat is that it requires modification. It's a good general purpose model, but you need to adjust it. You need to take it and try, if you're a vendor, try and figure out what the cost of your customer's infrastructure is and how your product can reduce that for them. If you're an end user of hardware or of infrastructure, try and understand what the right deployment model is for you. Use it as a guide. How do you make decisions about this? Now, if you want this model, we're still in the final stages of review, and we're going to release it. You can follow us on Twitter or Facebook, or just send me an email. And once the model is ready, I'll be more than happy to share it with you. And we're hoping by doing this, we're adding a little bit more transparency to the industry. We're allowing people to understand their costs a little bit more and to make better decisions around infrastructure. It goes very well with open compute, where as people are taking designs, consuming them, sharing them, do the same thing with the cost model. Take it, use it internally, share it outside, tell us how you've modified it. In that sense, it'll become a lot more valuable. Thank you for your time.